You drill it daily. You open up the body daily. Just like we practice martial arts daily, it's a practice that when you drill it, you get the benefits from it. And I think that's the real value of drilling. Even though, how much does drilling get beaked on our social channels? Quite a bit. Quite a lot. If you're looking at a drill, it is a section or a moment in time within an art in order to develop a particular skill set, right? right? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Buddha Brothers podcast. You got Eric and Kyle. And this week, I have to admit, my muffin hands are incredibly sore. Oh. <laughs> I spent a full hour private one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Goat. And all we did was focus on the basics with some focus mitts and did some pad work. And it was so good to spend time one-on-one -on -one with a great coach to fix the foundational issues in my biomechanics, in my body mechanics, in the way I'm engaging my core and being able to have instant feedback on the result. Like, oh, no, change that, oh, pivot your foot a little more. See, you, you torque it and then boom, that's how it feels, right? And you're like, oh, whoa. And my whole, I, I literally have my entire core, like my band around my belly is super sore. I was engaging muscles that I haven't, so I've obviously haven't been punching properly. <laughs> you know, that's what's really interesting about really focusing and digging down into those basics and doing those drills and screwing it up and watching the improvement uh, and what magic can happen in an hour. The really important part about drilling too is it helps you to take your mind out of it and build it into muscle memory, right? So that it's just almost like instinctive. Mm -hmm. You know, when you do a drill over and over and over and over again, then eventually you don't need to, to think about it. It can just happen. Whereas like when you first learn, you're like, okay, step one, step two, step three, then step four. And then if you, but if you drill it, it's just da, 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 right. And it just lets you get deeper and deeper into your practice because you don't have to waste all that energy going through the pattern like the the drills with kevin like watching our digital seminar do we doing this this combo that we we like to do at first when we started it was like okay one two three duck like you know like yeah. you're, you're going through it you're thinking about step it step by step and then now you're working on on power because like all right now i know at least the count how can i make it better how can i improve it mm -hmm. but that doesn't come without repetition yeah yeah and what i was actually finding was when i when i was anticipating i would screw things up because near the end of the class like we were going through all the drills and we were, were focusing and progressing and then at the end the very end he's like okay now i'm just gonna throw you have to read it and i found myself thinking too much about the drill and that caused me to anticipate what he was going to do and i would screw it up mm. i was anticipating having to weave but he threw a kick and if i would have read it properly and not been like, oh that's kind of the downside at least what trap i have found myself to get into with drills is if you start to anticipate you know oh, I'm, this is going to be a drill that i'm going to run if he does this and if you think he's going to do that but he doesn't you're, I, I get tagged, yeah. I get hit. But the flip side is the incredible value that you're building in the muscle memory of when you slip, you're loading up your cross, you know? And yeah. those kind of things where in the heat of the moment, there is no thought, that's where you've drilled the muscle memory into, you know, after one comes two and, and when one is presented, you deliver a two. And it's like, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? Drills allow you to use it continuously so you don't lose it. Mm -hmm. We were doing a photo shoot and, you know, we, we hadn't trained Filipino martial arts in, in quite some time. And we were doing one with the serrata sticks and I was swinging the serrata stick like I was normally doing and I cracked my elbow. 
oh. I'm like, that hurt. It was hurt. it was sore for like a good week, maybe two oh, weeks. Oh, it was a good one. Well, it's the like the, the phenolic. Sur- like, phenolic you, you touch anything with that, it's it's no hurting. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Clang. Yeah. So, like, I touched my elbow with it, and like, man, it's because I'm out of practice. I didn't mm-hmm. know where my body yes. parts were during. Like my swings. It's so true. And I have actually made an effort to, even just in my daily workouts, is to incorporate some form of weapons training and flow work into my workout. And I use it as part of my warm up. So I will, my favorite, ultimate favorite is a hanbo. Mm. I love flowing with the hanbo, man. It's so nice because I can do these repeti- repetitive motions that lead to a meditative state. And that meditative state, dude, when you get into this flow zone and there is there, like no time and it's just everything is flowing, it's like I don't want to leave and I just keep going. And, it, and then before you know it, you've just unlocked this body awareness and the, this, this fluidity that can translate into any other physical practice. Fluidity, it's funny, right? Because you're using something that's rigid calculating one two three over and over again to create fluidity interesting because you can't just go free flow something it's too unstructured it it has too much chaos it has too but if you're you, flailing yes exactly <laughs> I mean, we've all seen that <laughs> but if you go and you practice it allows you to get into a flow state like drilling actually lets you get into flow because you can remove yourself from the drill at some point because you the drill starts doing itself beautiful yeah and just like qigong same thing you know you learn like when we took the uh sifu sings qigong course and mm-hmm. learned how to do these beautiful movements at first you're like okay what am i doing i'm drawing a yin yang with my hand what what and you, you're like, this is this is stupid. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Okay, I I don't get it. The, can we not do this? I want to hit the heavy bag. <laughs> you right. know, you know? But then when you start to, when you stick with it, and that's the other thing too. Like if you give up on something like that too early, you don't see the incredible magic that is on the other side of the the questioning, the doubt, the meh. This is is this worth it? Sticking with it, man. Qigong changed my life, yeah. changed my game. I actually started bringing that back because I, I hadn't done it in a, in a good while. And now that it's summer out, I try to work out outside and I just do body weight stuff, you know, push ups, sprints, flow work, rope flow, uh, do some, do my drills, do some focus on my jabs, do, do some shadow boxing. Uh, and just functional fitness is really what I'm focusing on. And I try to, when my heart rate gets really high, when I'm drenched in sweat, okay, time to slow it right down and focus on Qigong and let the, just the move, the fluidity and the movement bring your heart rate down. And it's actually crazy because I find that, you know, they talk about the runner's high. Yeah. How when you, you, your heart rate's pumping, endorphins are pumping through your veins and you feel amazing Mm. you reach that and then do qigong and honestly man it's it's from another planet it's otherworldly right especially if the sun's out and then you one of my favorite parts of qigong is just standing and breathing and and just feeling your heartbeat it's incredible man all the facets of martial arts are so incredible one thing that i really find beneficial with martial arts is that release of like alpha or like of like locked in energy and we'll say male energy because you know how things are right now like you it's it's it is what it is (laughs) if you have a lot of male energy inside of you the male side of the 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 hard force the, the the testosterone the if you don't have a place to actively release that on a regular basis, it gets pent up. And you could see it in especially teenagers who have a whole bunch of testosterone come into their body. They get all crazy and, you know, they don't know what to do with it. And 
that's when all the bar fights start happening or when mm-hmm. people, they start challenging things or they start breaking things or like doing all this crazy stuff because it's just all it's all locked in there and martial arts is such a release valve that i really think people need where you're like you could go hard and train hard and drill hard and like get that release like it's similar to like the weightlifters that go in and you're yelling and like they're releasing those animal mm. urges and instincts yeah. smashing a, a tire with a sledgehammer yeah. or like boxing hitting the heavy mm. bag like you need that pressure release yeah. valve and just to to balance yourself out and fighting is something that is in our dna like the only reason we're here is because warriors of our ancestors that were warriors won battles right like it, it that's why we're here and to not have a release valve for it is amazing but then you have the other side of martial arts the flow side the the soft side the meditative side the qigong the tai chi the you know kung fu mind practices mm-hmm. the and that's what completes the the cycle of martial arts and both balance both things can be drilled and true when you're hurt and you can't do all the hard skills you could sure as heck drill the the soft skills taikoku yeah learning the movements with the six foot staff stretching opening up the meridians of the body man taikoku changed my game yeah. and that's a practice it's a it is a uh a body practice it's like martial arts yoga if it's, you were never yeah. to have <laughs> have have yeah. heard of it yeah taikoku is a japanese uh japanese stretching with the six foot staff and our sensei sensei jay creasy we filmed a digital seminar with him called taikoku which is outstanding but to your point it's creating and opening up flow inside the body through structured stretching and utilizing something hard to soften up the tension in the body Mm -hmm. the heart staff dude there are stretches that are not possible without the six foot staff yeah and takai sensei is unbelievable at guiding you through this practice but the point is it's like a drill in itself you drill it daily you open up the body daily just like we practice martial arts daily it's a practice that when you drill it you get the benefits from it and i think that's the real value of drilling even though how much does drilling get beaked on our social channels quite a bit quite a lot and i really think it's because people who look at drills don't necessarily know what they're looking at right if you're looking at a drill it is a section or a moment in time within an art in order to develop a particular skill set right. right like trapping like if you're doing drilling and trapping it looks ridiculous that won't work in the octagon right but they're working on something particular and you have seen trapping in the octagon like it's it's proven yeah it doesn't happen often but it yeah there's moments in time where it works or you know knife skills like a u drill the sensitivity drill mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that one gets beaked all the time all its training is how to f- move your hand or flow with a knife without mm-hmm. attaching to it yes right like because as soon as you grab a person's arm slice they're gonna slice you and we're doing a seminar with uh oliver pintados yeah gm pintados the yeah. mini mini seminar we're going to be dropping with him and he showed us that like yeah. if you grab, grab if you grab a person who is trained at knife fighting i'm going to slit your wrist he they will cut you nine thousand before times. you even know it <laughs> yeah right so you if you can move and not uh, attach on it it could be valuable mm-hmm. and i think drills as you were talking about this, I think part of the reason why we always get the comments online on our social channels when we're posting drills, that that people think they're looking at combat when you're actually watching someone develop an attribute 
Mm -hmm. This drill develops an attribute. It develops timing, develops coordination, develops precision, develops reflexes, develop, 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 develop. This, is, this drill is develop your footwork. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You're going to look like an idiot. And there's, when you look at it in a snapshot, what combative value is that? You guys are McDojo or whatever, you know, whatever comment we get. No joke. Like if you took Muhammad Ali and took all his credibility away, all of his wins, all of his things like that, and you just got the man to shadow box, he would get beaked. Dancing around, doing the crazy foot shuffles, like doing all that stuff, yeah. swinging the arm, <laughs> throwing the other arm. Like people be like, that would never work in the octagon. Or sorry, in the ring. <laughs> right. It's true. But that man went in there and made it work in the ring. Yeah. But he had to prove it, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't know what you're looking at a lot of the times, even when it comes down to a basic jab, mm -hmm. right? There's so many elements to a basic jab. And I've seen them thrown so many ways, like long and like reaching and pushing the foot out and holding out the yeah, punch to yeah. develop power, snapping ones, doubled up, like, you know, like elbows flared with some people, elbows tucked in, vertical fists, horizontal mm -hmm, fists, mm -hmm. like that's just one punch. Yeah. And people are drilling it a whole bunch of different ways. And then you look like at a guy like Canelo, he could throw a jab 20 different ways, right? That's why he's the best in the world. Mm -hmm. So drilling is hard to, it's hard to know what a person's getting from a drill too. And even you could be drilling something and it won't even be physical what you're drilling. Like with the Qigong, Sifu Singh gets you to stand there and hold your hands out and your arms start burning, but he's drilling or he's trying to get you to get through the pain and mm -hmm. be present in the moment and be comfortable in discomfort yeah like kung fu old kung fu yeah and there's value in that 100 percent. and we've seen it it spills over into your everyday life yeah and that's a, i think that's a huge part of why martial arts is so valuable is because it does make us comfortable in uncomfortable situations and we're the ones voluntarily signing up for this we're saying yeah i'm gonna go get my ass kicked tonight mm-hmm not many people, what is it? What did we, we Googled it a while, a long time ago. It was like 5% of the population yeah. has trained martial arts or something like that. Small, super low. something small. Yeah. Tiny percentage. And that's why some people are looked at like loners or nutcases when they train martial arts. Mm -hmm. like why are you going and hurting yourself every week? Yeah. And you want to hurt other people? Yeah. Wow. You must be damaged. Are you rolling around <laughs> and choking people? And like, so <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. And they think you're like angry or like, right. Dude, yeah. And then you meet, you go to throw a dart at it. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some clubs out there that are poisonous and, oh, and yeah. full of shitty people. But the vast majority of schools you can throw a dart at and there's going to be incredible humans there that are supportive, that are that have created an environment that is conducive to growth, that is helpful for wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. And no matter if you're a white belt, have, can't punch yourself out of a wet paper bag, or you're a black belt from another style trying to become a white belt again in something else and cross train, that's, that's what the environment of a well-oiled dojo allows for. And I think that's more common than not. And I was training with a younger martial artist recently. And you know, he's in his teens. Yeah. And he's just not very strong or like, you know, aggressive or like he, he fights terribly right now. Yeah. But what a perfect place for him to be, right? The area where he needs to work on, this is the perfect place it's to build exactly it. exactly it. Right? He needs to build that confidence. He needs to build, you know muscle familiarity movement patterns he needs to understand his body he needs to build strength he needs to build all these things and you can see that he's building all this thing and the nice thing too is he's in a community where he's allowed to do that like if he was to go to a gym and like walk around with a whole bunch of like meatheads and stuff that would be un super uncomfortable mm -hmm. for him mm -hmm. but, 
but you know he gets to strength train condition work his confidence work his mm -hmm. mindset be around a group of people that he yeah and like he may never be the most amazing martial artist that i know mm -hmm. but i do know that he's going to be 30 times better than when he he walked in that door and isn't that beautiful that martial arts can offer someone a, a level up no matter where they're at they can look at getting better in not only the physical area of their life and building confidence and all the other ancillary benefits from training but the value of becoming proficient in something and a good instructor would cultivate that a good instructor would see where you're at and help you get one step better and then acknowledge it you did great tonight. You like your hook was really improved and I could feel it, even though it might still be a shitty hook, but it got better. Right. And, and then when he starts to feel more proficient, this, that's that, that's that addictive nature of martial arts. That's that uh, you're like, I want to become more proficient at this. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to feel that like big time in jujitsu, how it's like, it's this chess game, right. you know, it's like, I, I, I really suck at chess right now, but man, do I want to become a chess player? I want to set things up. I, like, totally. I mean, it's, it's a game. Yes. And what I love about good schools is that it doesn't matter where you're at, you're going to get better and a good environment will cultivate that and fast track it by teaching you class by class, day by day, something new, and I'm seeing it. I'm getting better. I'm not gassing out every time. I, whoa, I tapped someone out. Amazing. Yeah. You know? And when you get to the point skill-wise, when you're maybe one of the better ones in your class, and maybe there's nobody that can challenge your, your skill set, you can always learn to teach at that point. And there's a whole realm of learning that takes place there. Like when you get to that point where you're now giving back, your skill gets better from teaching because you have to know every single detail mm -hmm. in almost every situation because everybody's different in order to, to teach it properly. That's a huge part of mastery. The ability, if you know something so well that you can, you can vibrate molecules in the air and communicate something where the message is received and and given to another martial artist where that martial artist can do what you know wow <laughs> like that is that's a level of math that and it actually you learn you actually learn more from teaching than being taught in my experience because when you when you're teaching something you know it so well and you're actually given the challenge to articulate something that you know and put it into words and watch another human try to replicate what it is you're trying to tell them to do and if your communication is flawed sloppy or not clear the message is not going to get across but if you can but that is part of the lesson for you is learning how to teach learning how to to communicate learning how to transmit the message that you're trying to deliver and there's nothing more fulfilling than teaching youth totally. and kids that are in that sponge state. Look at the best in practice, Michael Jordan. That man would just sit there and drill fouls, drill threes, drill all the shots on the court. And he's the best in the, in the sport. Same with LeBron. Same. Look at the sushi chef, that, that sushi chef in Japan who, in that train station who mm -hmm. makes sushi and just, is the best the in the world at it because yeah. he makes that sushi every day consistently. Mm -hmm. Like drilling is in a way more of a mental practice than a physical practice. Interesting. Because the ones who can continue to drill and not get bored and tired and pff, I know this already. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Next. Those are the ones that keep excelling, right? Because they keep getting better. And that's why it's a, a, a mental practice because consistently drilling is boring. Consistently saving money is boring. Consistently working on your craft is boring. Like, you know, you when we were younger, 
as entrepreneurs, both you and I wanted 30 businesses. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'm going to own this one oh. and this one. You're going to have a wine and company. We'll, yeah, I'm going to do this. Fitness this. Uh, and, and, and then we'll start another one. Oh, we'll yeah. Another one. And I'll have an R8. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Way to go. Now we just want one. Yeah. It's all been, we're like, we're saying no to opportunities all the time. Hey, hey, let's, you know, you guys know e-commerce. I got this idea. And then, like, and there's so many flashy things. But bumpers. With anything. Like, if we just stay here and keep drilling, you day know, in, day just, out, we just keep getting better at this craft. Yes, yes. Get better at this e-commerce craft, mm. just, just like we're getting better at our martial arts craft. Like, we're not going to get worse. Mm -hmm. the The sport can change. That's actually interesting. When you look at drills in martial arts, and then the equivalent in business is like processes, and you know, coming up with a drill for a punch combo is actually pretty similar to putting in a process that's like a drill for your whatever business practice system system you know i wake up i do this and i do it every day and guess what my finances are never a problem because i do my bookkeeping at 10 a.m i drill it yeah you know it's a process it's a system and all of a sudden before you know it you become proficient and you're smashing the pads you're smashing your goals yeah you're drilling it yeah writers some writers will I don't know how it does, I've read that it works differently for all writers, but they'll lock themselves in a room and they'll write from this time to this time every day. Some days they get crap. Make some it days a drill. They, they, they knock it out of the park. Buddha brothers challenge. We recently released on social media, Kevin goats focus mitt drills. And I challenge everyone listening to that podcast to check out on Buddha brothers TV our focus mitt drills that we filmed with Kevin Goat. That is the challenge. Try the drill and then look at that drill and practice it and have fun with it. And then look at other areas in your life where you need to tighten some shit up and turn it into a drill. Love it. All right. If you're not following us on all the social media things, you probably are if you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> I've, Make sure you do. I feel like whoever's listening, you're part of the crew. But we have some big content drops coming up in the near future i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag mm. we got michelle watterson uh, stuff ooh, okay. coming out yeah, of true it. we have some uh, filipino martial arts stuff coming yep. out and then um, i think we're gonna leak a whole bunch of uh eli knight's minute videos on, ooh, on I our, like it. our channel so you know we're gonna get loud and turn it up for a little while so stay tuned until next week see you next week <laughs>